Before we get started, I'd like to go over just a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. You'll have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel on the upper right hand side of your screen. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. You can also follow our live Twitter updates using the hashtag Festive Insights at ConnectEU. We'll be recording today's session and a copy will be sent out to all people that registered. Our speakers today are Becky Postlethwaite, Head of Retail, and John Fetto, Senior Research and Marketing Analyst for Hitwise. Today's presentation will cover top shopping days in 2015, key dates to look out for in 2016, mobile search themes in retail, trending gifts, and how you can take an audience-centric approach to your marketing campaigns. So over to you, Becky. Thanks, Emma. OK, so let's start with some really top-level industry trends. So what we're looking at in front of us here is traffic in the form of total visits to the shopping industry online for the festive period 2015 and 2014. So we saw that UK consumers paid 9.3 billion visits to shopping websites during the most recent holiday season. So that's across November, December, and the first week of January, which was actually an 8% increase from the 8.6 billion visits that we saw in the 2014 holiday season. So basically what we're saying is there are nearly a billion visits registered each week, with the week of Black Friday and the week of Cyber Monday generating the biggest traffic of the entire season. So what this is really about is contextualizing your own traffic against the wider industry and assessing the level of opportunity based on wider industry growth. If you do see a dip in your own traffic, what I would encourage you to do is plot your traffic versus the traffic of the wider industry to see if that's an industry thing or potentially a missed opportunity for you. So moving on to the next slide, what we can see here is a bit more of a granular breakdown day by day. Um, the orange circles that you can see in front of you here actually represent how popular that day was in terms of online traffic, so with number one being the most popular traffic day of the season. So the first news really to report here is despite the fact that several of the big retailers in the UK decided to actually drop out of Black Friday, the day was just bigger than ever, um, to the point where visits on Black Friday reached just over 200 million, um, and that was actually 11% up from the festive period of 2014 when we saw 180 million. Um, also, just on that note, visits to Black Friday were 9% higher on Cyber Monday and 43% higher than any of kind of the average average shopping day for the Christmas season on aggregate. Um, us Brits were also really, really shopping heavily in advance and in the run-up to Black Friday as well, with every single day of the week prior to Black Friday. I think we may have just uh, lost uh, the London office. Uh, so I'll just pick up as, they, as Becky kind of jumps back in here. Um, so as we were saying, um, you know, we, we did see a huge increase in visits over both Black Friday and Cyber Monday, um, and with some, I think all the top, all the days of the week leading up to uh, Black Friday were also among some of those biggest shopping days of the entire season. Um, and you know, one of the thing, key things to keep in mind um, is that you know, understanding what those key products are um, and and sites are for trending into um, into Black Friday, so you can stay up to date. Um, on, on fast-moving trends. Um, you know, interestingly, we saw that Boxing Day in the UK, which used to be one of the biggest holidays of the shopping days of the year, um, until uh, 2014, it continued its, its decline in 2015. Um, it, you know, in fact, it didn't even make it into the top 20 days of the season in 2015. Uh, Boxing Day, in fact, it was only the 22nd biggest online shopping day of the season, so we've definitely seen a shift um, to earlier shopping days and away from those January sales days. Um, you know, and finally, we're seeing um, a trend in the United States that we should kind of start to monitor to see if it, start, if it manifests itself in the UK, in that consumers are shopping deeper in the week online. It used to be, and we see here, that Mondays are still um, huge shopping days every, every week um, heading into Christmas. 
Um, but we do see a, a, a tapering off quickly after that as the week progresses. Um, in the United States, some of the biggest new shopping days of the year are occurring on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which give um, marketers an opportunity to um, to address and engage customers closer to the time that they're shopping back in stores. And I want to move on to um, our slide here, which is great, um, generously shared with us by our friends at the BRC. Um, and it shows the actual sales day by a week by week over the festive season. Um, and sorry, we're just working out another technical difficulty here. Um, we can see that Black Friday really is the dominant sale day of the entire season. Um, and it very much sets the tone for, for sales early on, leaving you know, customers keen for a deal and creating a price war of sorts and, and, and a challenge for, for many retailers. So I think Becky may be back and I'll let her <laughs> pick up if she's here. Jim, sorry, just dropped off the call there. Um, are you happy for me to start on Friday? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, perfect. So if we come through to um, the screen you can see in front of you here with the football analysis, um, we're going to have a look at how some of the festive trends translate to offline. So the image we can see here depicts change in football figures year on year. So what we can see is around Black Friday there's a really, really strong decline in footfall and lower in-store sales as consumers are increasingly shopping online. Um, January footfall was, was up in a big way year on year and explains why a lot of the stores posted growth after the festive season. Um, there are also a couple of ways you can use Hitwise postal data, postal data and demographics data to measure the traffic to specific store areas that you might have um, and this way start to really shift budget into your top performing postcode areas offline. And now we'll talk about a few other key dates um, to plan around heading into the Christmas season. Um, for starters, when email market email marketing is obviously one of the number one tools or tactics used by marketers, and and they're and marketers are sending more and more emails every year and effectively using them right to drive clicks uh, and sales. And last year, um, we saw that most retailers began their seasonal campaigns the week of Black Friday. Um, and, and one of the top days of the season was on, uh, was on Black Friday itself. Uh, but given the fact that all those key shopping days or, or all the days of the week leading into Black Friday were so, uh, were so heavy in terms of the number of visits, we think that there may be an opportunity for, uh, for retailers to start their campaigns even earlier this, uh, this year to kind of gear people up to, um, to shop heavier that week. Um, Next up, we will talk about gift guides. Um, gift guides are an increasingly helpful tool for shoppers who are looking for ideas about things to buy. And, and they also present a really great opportunity for non-retail marketers to capture the attention of shoppers uh, with you know, relevant seasonal content. And, and when consumers are getting more and more used to seeing these types of gift guides online, they're increasingly seeking them out. Uh, last year, we saw an increase in gift guide searches. Um, much 43% higher than the year before. Um, these types of searches, they usually begin rising um, as early as, as the beginning of November, but they really reach their peak uh, the first uh, full week after Cyber Monday. So after, um, after the first round of sales are done and people are looking for ideas. Uh, next, we see click and collect. The shoppers obviously love the idea of click and collect for the convenience and it's only becoming more popular. Um, searches for click and collect specifically were, were up last year over 2014 um, and they obviously spike again um, as the Christmas season progresses. Um, we actually saw the, the peak uh, sh click and collect activity happening um, right before uh, leading up to the two weeks before Christmas peaking on the 22nd and then dropping obviously quickly after, after that as we had actually into the holidays themselves and store hours shorten. Um, and next we see um, online shipping and package tracking peaked last year on, again, that same 22nd of December um, as early nervous shoppers right, are, are kind of making sure that they're gonna, their purchases are going to arrive in time. 
Um, interestingly, we saw that Tuesdays are the peak day for package tracking online, which makes sense given that Mondays are the top day of the week for shopping, so Tuesday people log on to make sure that their items have shift, shifted. So the real takeaway there is just to make sure that you provide continuous communication to your customers and make sure that your package tracking information is easily available. The next slide, um, talking about a few more th dates to keep in mind, and the next one is, is Christmas Jumper Day, which this year is on the 15th of December, so a little bit earlier. Um, online searches will peak around that day. Last year, uh, we saw that Star Wars jumpers, and particularly Darth, War Darth Vader ones in, in particular, were really popular. Um, so it's always fun to watch uh, the trending uh, themes in, in Christmas jumpers uh, for each year, so we'll keep an eye on that as we head through the season. Last minute shoppers, um, they buy gift cards and vouchers and be, as these electronic options become um, more normal, gift card searches are even more last minute uh, than usual. In fact, we see uh, peak gift card activity occurring in the final hours of the season um, on Christmas Eve and increasingly we're seeing uh, activity pick up even on Christmas Day uh, with searches for gift vouchers which would be more likely to be purchased in store peaking on Christmas Eve but gift cards peaking on Christmas Day. Um, there's also an, a growing trend of people trying to exchange, trade, or swap gift cards on Christmas Day and afterwards as they want to kind of find cards that, that they would be more relevant for things that they like. Um, and finally, um, you know, Christmas Day, and it's not only an opportunity to, to set consumers up for, for Boxing Day and early January sales, but it's also, uh, don't forget that that's the day that most of these gadgets that people receive as presents come to life. So they're going to be busy downloading driver software and apps and reading user guides and looking uh, to YouTube for tips and, and how-to videos. So make sure that you don't miss out on the opportunity to um, you know, to get off on the right foot and engage some of your new customers that you're making on Christmas Day. Becky, now I'll take it over and talk about some of the top retailers. So um, everyone obviously wants to know, it's such a big opportunity, but who is actually capitalizing best on all of that traffic? And the short answer is, is Amazon. So in December last year, over a quarter of all of the visits to shopping sites were to Amazon.com, which was actually up 18% um, from December 2014, which is, which is pretty impressive given the scale of Amazon. Um, it's actually even more dominant in the UK than it is in the US, where the site claims only just over 17% of all shopping visits. Um, with only a few exceptions, most of the sites in the top 15 shopping industry posted a growth in visits year on year and a growth in share despite the, the massive growth of Amazon. So what we're really saying there is despite Amazon, Amazon's dominance, there's still very much an opportunity there for some of the other smaller retailers. Um, just for those of you that already have access to Hitwise, to make sure that this department store um, insight is as relevant as possible, we, we can also spit out the traffic at a category level to any of the retailers above so that you can benchmark your performance on specific product lines versus your competitors. So, for example, if you're a retailer that only sells shoes, we can break out just the shoe section of Amazon or any of the other retailers here um, just to make sure that it's as relevant as possible. If you're looking to supplement that as well, we do have access to the internal search data um, within these websites too. So that's who's kind of getting the most traffic um, currently, but what we're also able to do is kind of give you a little bit of insight into some of the retailers to watch in the UK market. So one of the subcategories of the kind of what we call a parent category in Hitwise of shopping is home and garden. And when we take this, this sub-industry, we can see that Wayfair has seen the largest year-on-year -year growth online. Um, obviously, for everyone listening, that's great for you to know, but some of the key questions that Hitwise will answer is obviously what's driving that growth. So it's really about not just understanding that they're doing well, but understanding what's driven it in the form of email, social, search, display, affiliates, and it's really about building those attribution models to see you know, that graph in front of you here, what's really contributed most to that online growth, specifically over the festive period. Um, and there's a few other ones just to call out here that are probably worth flagging. Um, the retailers that we saw some really, really impressive year-on-year -year growth are, are Biolift, um, which I'm going to come on to speak a little bit more about later because of important links there to personalization, which is a massive trend that we're seeing in the retail space at the moment. Um, but also Beauty Bay, 
um, you can see that, that that kind of industry that you know, a bit of a surge online with some new entrants like Charlotte Tilbury really dominating the space. But Beauty the Beauty Bay saw some phenomenal growth uh, year on year, um, and also G2A.com. So Becky just mentioned um, the importance of understanding where um, where different sites are getting their traffic from. So we wanted to look at um, overall trends that we saw last Christmas, and, and you know we did take a look at where things stand uh, currently as well. And and last December, as as usual, search was still by far the top driver of traffic to the top retail sites. And in December uh, 2015, 44 percent of referred traffic to shopping and classified sites uh, came from a search engine. Uh, so it's obviously important to um, understand what search trends um, are going on as we as we head into Christmas. Um, other retail sites are also a major driver of traffic and, and even more important during the shopping season as you know people shop from one retailer to the other to the other so, so there's even more uh, referral traffic coming from other uh, shopping sites. Social media sites uh, last Christmas drove almost 8% of traffic. It may seem a little small, but um, compared to the other industries, it's actually quite large. Um, and in, it's important to point that out because we did see uh, steady growth in referred traffic coming from social between 2000. 2014 and 2015, and and even since December, we've seen uh, social referring even more traffic to shopping sites, and and that's likely due, uh, at least in part, to the incorporation of the successful incorporation, I should say, of of that buy now button and other call to action um, buttons that's that are increasingly used on social sites. Um, I should say again that the growth story for social is, is especially important because in 2014 we were seeing a decline in referral referred visits from from social. So social is definitely back as a tool that um, that retailers should be using or considering using to drive traffic, especially during Christmas. Um, multimedia sites too, like YouTube, especially, are driving um, more and more traffic to retailers, and 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 retailers are becoming uh, more savvy with their multimedia content, using using video to drive traffic, and even allowing uh, consumers to complete transactions on YouTube itself now. Uh, in fact, uh, the the share of, of referred traffic that we saw coming from these types of multimedia sites increased uh, seventy two percent between December 2014 and December 2015. So we're seeing uh, multimedia uh, increasingly uh, play an increasingly large role. Um, if you are, are considering expanding your multimedia um, campaigns, uh, I would suggest taking a look at what ASOS is doing. Um, they're driving a, a lot of traffic from, from YouTube to their site. Uh, in fact, in December, it received the most upstream traffic from YouTube of any of the top shopping sites except for Amazon. Um, Etsy and Game are also really good examples of, of retailers that are, are performing really well and driving a lot of a disproportionate amount of traffic on YouTube, from YouTube, I should say. So we're going to switch gears now um, and and speak about mobile, um, and this is going to be a, you know really the first mobile Christmas for mo for for the retail industry as a whole. Um, as of last week, we looked at um, the the device share in our of our shopping and classified sites, and we saw that um, right now they're receiving fully half of their online visits from mobile devices, um, compared to the all industry average. That's about 22 percent relative increase. Um, so online retailers are already ahead of the game, right, when it comes to uh, handling mobile visits. And, and as, again, this Christmas is going to be the one where we think that they cross over into the dominant mobile dominant territory where they'll get um, more than half of their visits from mobile devices. So marketers really need to be prepared for that. Um, but as we see here on this next slide, uh, where, where we break down the shopping industry by some of the sub uh, subcategories, a, a number of those sub industries are already um, solidly mobile dominant, and leading the way are, are both the health and beauty and intimate apparel sites, uh, which re are receiving about 58% of visits uh, from mobile devices. Um, now, obviously, both of those two industries uh, have you know some potentially sensitive or, or items of a personal nature uh, on in their content, so it's normal that they would be among the first to reach the mobile tipping point. Uh, however, you know we see 
you know, very, very general uh, industries like sports and fitness and house and garden apparel and accessories and the others that you see on your screen there, um, it's still now comfortably in, in mobile territory. So if you're looking at um, sites to take advantage of or to, to model your mobile strategy after, you could take a look at some in these following industries to see where they are. You can also look at Hitwise to find out where your particular uh, site falls and those of your competitors uh, for a more detailed analysis. Um, and now I wanted to um, look at some of the differences in the types of searches that people are conducting on their smartphones versus a desktop. And we did this um, using our new audience view platform. In fact, what you see on your screen now is a bit of information that's teased from our forthcoming mobile search report that's coming out at the end of the month. So, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but, but I wanted to just talk about you know, some of these themes that we identified in the report that are, are being conducted um, in a, extremely heavily on mobile devices. For instance, you see on the upper left-hand side, uh, searches including the word sale um, are initiated on a mobile device 77% of the time. So it really tells us that people are out, um, out sale shopping and, and conducting those searches on their mobile device while they're in another retail location. So, you know, they're always in play even after they enter uh, cross over the threshold of a, a retail establishment. Um, opening times too, it's 82% of those searches are initiated on mobile devices. So when people are out shopping, they want to know when stores are open and when they're going to close. Uh, engagement ring searches and jewelry just in general, um, these types of kind of uh, surprise purchases, I would say, um, are going to always skew more heavily mobile so you know you can conduct that search on your on your phone where where your your spouse or, or your your significant other may you know is less likely to find um, trace of those types of, of, of shopping activities happening on a shared computer um, price match too um, is is surprisingly um, heavily mobile uh, you know when people are out shopping they may be um, you know, having something already picked out and, and doing some price comparisons on their phone. And instead of, you know, visiting another retailer, they're just trying to see if, if the spot that they're at at the moment offers any price match options. And so making that information readily available may uh, keep people in your store and, and prevent them from going to another competitor to pick up something um, at an at a equal or a slightly lower price. Reviews also 84% of review searches are initiated on a mobile device. So shoppers are are not only um, you know looking for sales, but they're also doing comparison right in the in the aisles of the store. So they're compare you know looking at you know how how pro how other consumers have rated each of those products that they're considering for purchase. So you know you can make sure that you play a, a, a larger role in housing the, some types of those review information. So if you host that information on your site directly, you can keep people within your ecosystem. And finally, finance. So. Um, it's important to point out that a larger trend that we saw in the report are searches uh, that um, relate to things like finance and other types of content uh, that may be conducted by someone who's struggling financially. Those skew typically more heavily towards mobile devices, and that's you know that's largely because uh, people who may um, be struggling to make ends meet, their only connected device may be a mobile phone, so they're they're number one way that they're going to be interacting with your, your brand is, is likely through the mobile device. So it's important to keep that in mind if, if, um, if that is part of your target audience. And now we're going to talk about some product trends. Obviously, it's a little early to be talking about what some of the hot products are in 2016's Christmas season because people haven't really been begun their Christmas shopping yet. Uh, but we'll start off by looking at a recap of last year's hot products. And those are the ones that you see on your screen. We see things like um, Fitbit, uh, which was atop the list the entire season. And it's actually poised to, to do really well again this year. Uh, Fitbit sales and searches have been quite strong all year. Uh, likewise, Pandora Charm and Yankee Candle are also probably going to return. They're, they're pretty timeless types of, of, of gift items. Uh, the Pie Face game was definitely last year's hottest newcomer and can, pretty much came out of nowhere thanks to a viral video. And these types of toys, however, are generally, they tend to be one-hit wonders. So it's, 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 I don't expect that game will be quite as big of a hit this season. It's likely to be replaced by something that we haven't even heard of yet. Um, so we'll keep an eye on hot products um, on a weekly basis as we start heading, getting closer to Christmas. Um, 
Clark's shoes and particularly the, the Wallabies um, mod design are, were, were rising quickly last year. And we saw Amazon's Fire Stick um, video streaming device become really popular uh, along with other types of devices that are designed to stream video content directly to your TV as, as sites like Netflix and Amazon Prime uh, grow in popularity. And on uh, the on the topic of Amazon Prime, we just had um, Amazon Prime Day last week, which most of you are probably aware of, and it gives us a kind of unique opportunity to see what types of products are trending. In fact, um, we wrote a blog post about it last week that showed that Amazon Prime in the UK this year was significantly more popular than it was the year prior. Um, so, you know, consumers really turned out to to shop heavily on Amazon this year to take advantage of some of those deals. And we actually, and actually became like their third largest shopping day, of, or one of the top 10 shopping days of the year for Amazon. Um, and, and so they're obviously signing up a lot of new members for Amazon Prime. So going back to Becky's conversation about some of the top retailers, um, Amazon might do even better this year because they're signing up so many um, customers for uh, for free shipping, um, so they might be turning to Amazon first before before looking elsewhere to take advantage of that offer. But uh, back to back to our search analysis, we actually looked at the the items that consumers were searching for on Amazon. That's what we call our internal site search uh, feature, and we can tell some of the top products that they were looking for, and gives us a pretty good idea uh, of some of the, the products that we will expect to see um, popular in on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and probably throughout the season. So we saw, again, Amazon's Fire Stick um, was one of the top products that, uh, that Prime Day shoppers were looking for on Amazon. We also saw wireless speakers, uh, Bluetooth headphones. Those have been pretty popular. Uh, in the years past, but the price point has generally been relatively high, but as the price comes down on those, we expect those to be even bigger this Christmas season. Um, we also you know, see the gaming console PS4 and Xbox both did really well on Prime Day. I, I, I wasn't really sure if we were going to see these, uh, these gaming consoles be such dominant players this year, since it's the third Christmas uh, without a, new, um, a, a unique new device coming out. Um, but this Prime Day search uh, analysis really showed that they were still um, performing really well. So um, outperforming expectations, so we expect them to probably still be popular um, this Christmas. Um, and you know, obviously, our increasing desire to stay connected, um, our batteries can't really keep up with that desire, and so consumers are really looking to buy some of these um, portable external uh, battery chargers, uh, um, and those were really hot items um, on Amazon Prime Day. And finally, you probably had to have been living under a rock to have missed the release of Pokemon Go last week um, in a blog post I just wrote. Uh, that went live this morning. Uh, Hitwise reported that 1.9 million Brits were searching for Pokemon last week, and um, it's really resulted in a resurgence of everything Pokemon, and we saw that again in the Prime Day data. So be assured that you know Pokemon will be really hot this season, um, probably one of the season's hottest trends. And one of the items that's yet to be released is called the Pokemon Go Plus, but already people are, are searching for it. Um, it's a wearable device that lets users um, know by a little vibrations in the device when they're near important Pokemon locations. Um, it should be available by the end of August, and it's um, expected to cost about 35 pounds. So another trend that we're seeing, that we expect to see really popular um, or, or increasingly popular this season is, um, is in home automation. So um, let's we, we've actually been tracking um, these types of products, which include things like connected internet-connected thermostats, lights, cameras, um, and even slowly, we're starting to see some smart appliances coming to the market. You know, on your screen now, you'll see the annual trend of about um, 18,000 different uh, variations of, of these smart home products that I'm tracking in our Hitwise. Uh, database, and you can see that there are generally spikes around Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So this, these types of products generally do better around the holidays, and, and in fact, in the last year, they've grown by uh, more than 230 percent. So it should be another uh, good year for for growth in home automation products. And if you're interested in understanding kind of what are some of the leading brands, we see Nest really leading the pack. They have three pretty strong products in the marketplace, which is their Nest thermostat. Uh, their, their smoke and carbon monoxide detector, and then their Nest, formerly Dropcam, 
um, device, and they, they Nest products occupy about 19% of home automation search share. Next, we see Philips Hue, which are internet-connected light bulbs uh, that can change color or you know set, be set to timers and be controlled by your phone. Uh, they occupy 6% of search share. And then Tracker, which is a little Bluetooth um, device that you can connect to things that you might easily lose, like your, your remote control or your phone or even your pet. Um, it'll tell, help you find out where they are. And, and Tracker occupies about 5% of search share. Um, you know, despite the fact that home automation is still relatively small and emerging, one reason I think to really go after this audience is because um, the people buying these products are early adopters. We did conduct an analysis in our audience view platform and it showed that people searching for these products are generally young, high income, disproportionately male. So even if um, you know individual items don't result in a great amount of sale, stocking and promoting them can can be a great um, lure to get this this really sought after consumer audience. In fact, John Lewis is a good example. They've established a what they call a smart home experience in their Oxford Street location where shoppers can kind of get a hands-on experience to explore the house of the future. Um, it's probably a smart move by retailers, by the retailer as, um, as John Lewis is actually one of the top big uh, retailers uh, shopped at online by smart home shoppers. Uh, we also found uh, through audience view that other retailers that they shop at heavily um, are Screwfix, Curry's, Ikea, and, and B&Q. So we'll talk about another uh, trending uh, trend that we're seeing in, in products that might be important to keep an eye on this Christmas. Um, we go back to February uh, earlier this year. We uh, published a report on the subscription box industry, and we identified it as one to watch, and, and, it, and it's likely to be one to keep an eye on Christmas. Um, since August 2014, we saw visits to these subscription box sites um, in the United Kingdom increase by about 325%. In June, for instance, um, we made 2.7 million visits to the leading sites in the UK. Um, and you know, while many of the companies who are who are big in this space, and we'll talk about them in just a second, they're American. Um, they we did find in the search data that there is a growing hunger for alternative UK-based alternatives, uh, which creates a lot of opportunity for marketers. So if you can get an understanding of what the top brands are in this space right now, um, the, the top one is a U.S.-based snack company, Gray's, and they had about 765,000 visits in the U.K. Um, last month, Loot Crate, another U.S.-based company, um, is doing well with over half a million visits. Cornerstone was really a brand that um, we talked about, one that we wanted to keep our eye on, and it's, it's increased its performance in the last six months significantly. And last month, it had 300,000 um, visits up from 93,000 in December, and they sell um, kind of high-end shaving products, and it's a UK company. Um, next, we see Birchbox, which is uh, um, it's a UK outpost of a US-based company selling female cosmetics, um, and Gusto is another UK brand which delivers um, uh, pre-proportioned ingredients to make food each week. So the reason that I mention this trend isn't really just because um, they're mostly uh, you know, pure play subscription sites are growing, but also because uh, traditional retailers are starting to take note and adding those options onto their traditional services. For instance, in the United States, um, Starbucks has gotten on board and in offering what they call their Starbucks Reserve um, high-end products. They, they're, they're selling subscriptions to that to be delivered to your door. Uh, Sephora is also launching what they call their Play service, uh, which they're using to drive in-store traffic. So there may really be opportunities for retailers in the months ahead to explore adding on a subscription off offering to your existing product lineup. As you know, it could also compete uh, for or propose a really interesting alternative for the traditional one-off gift voucher, and it could you know mean more and more money coming in um, every week or every month, depending on the frequency of, of your subscription offering. So along those lines of the subscription box trend, um, we're also seeing a really, really big rise in demand for personalization in the retail industry, um, and that's especially um, relevant over the festive period as well. So what you can see in front of you here, this graph actually represents a portfolio of personalized gift search terms over the festive period last year. 
Um, and what we can really see is not just the surge in demand for personalized gifts year on year. So if you, if you sort of strip out the middle bit of this graph and just purely look at the demand a year ago versus the demand um, last Christmas, you can see that that's obviously seen a big um, year on year um, increase. But the dramatic spike in the run after Christmas is what we're most interested in. So this obviously suggests that there is a big opportunity for search optimization around personalization within the festive period specifically. Um, obviously, Hitwise Search Data will provide you with the detail behind this. So if you're wondering, you know, what, where is that demand coming from more specifically and what are the specific personalized gifts and products people are looking for, um, I, I'd urge you to speak to your account manager about how you can capitalize on this trend if you are actually current, currently planning for Christmas uh, right now. And the great thing I think about this trend is that it's you know it's always marketable and it can be a profitable category to help you bridge that gap between big shopping occasions. So you can very much use this data all year round as well as just over that festive period when we see the big, big, big spike in demand. So when we break this down in a bit more detail to understand who the audience is behind the searches, um, we can see here that the demand is being driven by females in a, in a huge, huge way. So using these profiling reports in audience view, um, we can really use this data to inform things like product color, colors and designs, um, and also the behavior reports in audience view will show you what, what content the females are searching for that you can obviously use to inform your search marketing strategy as well. So I think the point I'm really trying to make here is personalize your personalization strategy using this kind of data. Um, another thing that I thought was quite interesting with this is that the audience that are looking for personalized gifts is also quite a lucrative one. So when we look at the consumers searching for personalized gifts, they're, they're overrepresented for the Mosaic groups A, G, and H, um, which as, as you know, if you have access to Mosaic or you're segmenting by Mosaic, is, is that these, these kind of people are the most affluent, desirable or customer segments online and absolutely you know some of the audiences you'd, you'd want to find more of and um, so just really to summarize on the kind of the personalized gifting section there's some real benefits here I think you know one of the things to point out is that it's a, a great way for retailers to help build your customer base so when you come to personalization consumers are often quite happy to share their data in return for a more personalized customer service or product um, if you want to validate that further, what you can do in Hitwise is run some basic clickstream analysis. So if you want to validate if you're not entirely sure whether personalization gifting will work for your audience, have a little look at the kind of websites that your audience are visiting before and after your own. And if you can see a lot of other uh, websites that sell personalized gifts, for example, I don't know, John Lewis gift list and similar sites that will really help you um, get a strong indication of interest and intent from your, from your shoppers as well. And that's a really good transition um, to our last section, talking about um, some ways to uh, conduct more um, audience-centric marketing, and because it's really important uh, to to create that personalized experience, which is more increasingly expected by consumers. So the next few slides will outline some of the ways you can use um, our audience view platform, or that, that our clients are using our audience view platform, to create those more personalized audience-centric experiences. Um, since I mentioned earlier, gift guides are becoming increasingly, you know, important. Um, media companies are, are probably the top player in, in creating some of those gift guides in the marketplace. Um, but in order to create, you know, the gift guides that are going to have the most appeal, um, you know, those media companies de need to understand who shoppers are actually shopping for. Um, and in our analysis from last Christmas, we identified. Um, that her and men are some of the most popular, um, you know, kind of recip gift recipients mentioned in these gift guide searches, uh, with each of them representing about 10% of searches. Um, but we also saw a lot of searches looking for th gifts for someone of a certain age and often gender. We saw, you know, instances, uh, gifts for an eight-year-old boy was, was one of the most common variations uh, among those types of searches. And, and likewise, we saw interest in in the interests of the recipients were specified. So we saw this in things like gifts for cat lovers and uh, gifts for bike lovers. We also saw book book lovers, wine lovers, nature lovers, um, nature lovers, uh, and, and even cheese were, were commonly called out in, in some of these searches. So understanding, you know, kind of the, the people that 
that our that your consumers are shopping for is important in terms of putting together the right types of gift guide list. But um, in this instance, you know, audience, it, we also want to understand the person behind those searches. So understanding who's going to be uh, looking for those gift guides, and we found that um, that people looking for conducting gift guide searches, 63% of them are female. Um, so it's important to consider that when putting together your list. We also found that they are more likely to read uh, news sites like Cosmopolitan, Real Simple, and even the, the money section specifically of Mirror. These are um, audiences that are among the most likely to conduct gift guide searches. So these are publishers that really should be considering developing gift guide content this Christmas. And another way to, um, you know, develop, you know, a more audience-centric approach is just to understand, use our audience view platform to, to identify kind of different ways to, to cross-sell and upsell to a particular audience of interest. For instance, in this instance, we looked at uh, rugby and football fans in audience view, and we define those as just as people who have searched for, um, searched for either those sports online or visited um, some of the top rugby and football sites. Um, and things that they are searching for naturally include a lot of sporting related products and tickets. Um, but we can also learn a lot more about this audience and, and what their other interests and lifestyles are by their other search behaviors, eliminating sports. Uh, for instance, we, we were able to um, identify that they're more likely to be um, searching for Xbox One Elite controllers, so they're gamers. Um, they're also 67% more likely to be searching for North Face. Um, and and um, oops, sorry, um, and more likely to be searching for Dyson V6. So um, you know, when you take an audience-centric approach, you don't need to stop at the most obvious products. You can use their other search behavior to identify other things that you can sell them, and then other ways to message to them to reflect the more complete person that they are. So here's a, a really great example that should be relevant for, for quite a lot of you. Um, that I found pretty interesting. So what we did here is we segmented online the, the YouTube bullet audience. Um, it's super relevant, obviously, because that was one of the top selling products over the festive period last year as well. Um, and it's something that um, a product that a lot of retailers are working with at the moment. Um, it comes as no surprise, really, that the audience has a skew towards females. Um, but there are 40% males that are actually part of this audience segment as well. So there absolutely could be an angle here for retailers to feature both men and women in their product images um, and also embed that into video strategy. I had a little look at some of the, the key videos around how to use the Nutribullets and lots of other video content around this. And I'd say a solid sort of 80% or more were um, around females. So it feels like there's potentially a missed opportunity there. Um, to target that male segment, which is quite a significant contributor to this audience segment. So now I'm just going to move on to kind of wrap up, really, so some of the top tips to take away from the session today. Um, so starting off, um, number one, Black Friday is the new Boxing Day, in short. We've absolutely seen Black Friday replace Boxing Day as that key opportunity for you to capitalize on traffic um, around this time period. Campaigns need to get started earlier, but there is a kind of a risk of getting focused on, on the, just the deals. Number two, social is absolutely back and made a great return as a really important contributor as a kind of overall marketing mix to many of the key retailers over the last Christmas period. Um, explore using the action buttons in your social campaigns and also just another point on that, because we have access to daily click stream data, you are able to do things like source the actual days of the campaign, for example, when one of your competitors has posted a YouTube campaign that was particularly successful and you can always just jump onto their social media platforms and identify the content of that to really start to see what's working for your competitors. Um, Number three, take a mobile first approach. Um, make sure to develop co content that's optimized for mobile devices. Um, and also, everyone, keep an eye out for our new report that's going to be coming soon around splitting out um, mobile versus desktop searches. Um, number four, stay on top of consumer trends. Um, online search absolutely is the, the best resource for insights into how people are searching for changing tastes and preferences. Um, again, weekly search um, is something that you should be looking at in Hitwise to identify fast-moving search terms in your industry or your sub-industry. 
And then lastly, some of the insight that we've um, pulled around audience view is really kind of drumming that message home of know your audience. Um, go beyond some of the obvious options to create messaging, offers and search content that engage um, with your specific audience's full range of interest and lifestyle above and beyond just Sylvia. Great, thank you, Becky. We're now going to begin answering some, answering some of the questions submitted during the presentation. We've received a huge amount of questions, so thanks so much for those, but unfortunately we won't be able to get through all of them. We'll definitely get back to any of you who, um, who, answer, who ask questions by the end of today. Uh, so first question, when you talk about mobile, are you including tablets in this? That's a question for John. Right, yes, and when we refer to mobile, we're, ref we're talking about smartphones and tablets. Um, so yeah, that's, it's included in our mobile data, our mobile search data and visits. Okay, brilliant. And on to the next question. Have you noticed a change in traffic to retail sites post-Brexit? I haven't seen a significant change since the referendum vote, um, but one thing that we talked about in our most recent uh, Inspire report that uh, identifies 11 different dashboards that people can track um, kind of some early consumer trends to get an idea of where the economy or where the consumer mindset is moving is to take a look at the traffic that's being driven by um, by email campaigns from retailers, and, and that is one space that, you know, if, if if the retailers start to feel that they're they're losing out on sales, one of the primary one of the first things that they're going to turn to is email, and maybe increase their email campaigns. And so we will be taking a, a close look at monitoring if if retailers are driving more traffic than usual from from email. And if they are, that could be a good indication that um, that shoppers are starting to cool off a little bit. Obviously, it will be something to, that we'll have to continue to monitor. Um, throughout the holiday season, throughout the Christmas season, as you know, the, the price of the pound, the value of the pound may have an impact on, uh, on consumers' purchases this Christmas. Yeah, definitely. And just a final question for today. Is there a way we can see mobile versus desktop searches for this Christmas season, and how does it differ? Yeah, it's something we'll be uh, taking a look at every week. I think throughout uh, the throughout the Christmas season, we get that updated data every week through our audience view platform. So we'll be able to see right away um, Monday morning uh, what what search trends are, are occurring on mobile devices, and we'll be able to compare them to different weeks. So yeah, if you're interested in um, in getting access to that data um, throughout the Christmas season, please you know reach out to your um, to your, your account manager uh, your or your engagement manager to find out how to do that. Okay, great. Thanks so much then to John and Becky, and thanks for everyone attending today. As mentioned earlier, you'll all receive a follow-up email with the link to the recording of today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your day in the sunshine.